Good morning and welcome back to the Squirrel Heat YouTube channel. And this is the Liverpool preview a bit later than I thought it would be. Had a bit of a struggle yesterday, but I wanted to get something out anyway. The kickoff isn't till half one, so I'm hoping that you'll accept the quite late video that I've got coming out, which is Bournemouth versus Liverpool. We are away at Bournemouth. Now, obviously, we're going to do what we always do, and we're going to look at the form of the last six games for both teams. Bournemouth, not looking too great, but let's also take into consideration some of the teams that they've come up against. Now, obviously, they got a 6-1 win against Hull way back in October. Got a draw against Tottenham. Lost 2-0 against Middlesbrough, who Middlesbrough are no joke of a team either. It could have gone either way with those two teams with the quality that they both have. Um, losing to Sunderland, though, not the best. Um, not the best, you've got to say. But then they did go and win against Stoke. And Stoke have been looking pretty strong in the Premier League since they started to turn it round in about mid-October. But then they go and visit Arsenal. And um, it wasn't the best for you know Bournemouth either. Bournemouth actually played pretty good football in that first half. But at the end of the day, Arsenal just had too much quality in their team to and they finished them off, basically. And they lost 3-1. Coming on to Liverpool's games, and we our form looks pretty much the same as it always does. Five wins and one draw. That one draw being against Southampton. Had some good wins against Tottenham, Palace, Watford, Sunderland, and Leeds in the Cup as well. So, we've had some good wins. You know, we've had a couple of injuries and stuff like that now. Obviously, we are all aware and well aware that Philippe Coutinho isn't going to be back until after Christmas. Most likely sometime after New Year, something like five or six weeks with his injury, but you never know what can happen with injuries. Only time will tell with that one. Um, the news that we're still waiting on on lineups, obviously today, is Lalana Firmino, who's going to be fit. Lalana's apparently been in training, and he's waiting till the final moment to actually reveal whether he's going to be in there or not. But we do have options. We do have some good options. Got Irigi, who against uh, against Sunderland and Leeds, Scored some good goals as well. So Origi could be in line for starting up front. There's no Sturridge. Sturridge has still got a calf injury amid all these rumours that he's going to be sold, which I think's bullshit anyway. So I'm not going to pay attention to any of those rumours. I'm not going to give them... I'm not going to, I was going to make a video on it and I thought, nah, bullshit, why? Why would I? Why would I? Jurgen Klopp comes out in a press conference and just says, you guys just keep writing your stories. I'll tell you what, I, what, what my plans are. He's already pretty much said he's going to be selling Sacco. So I'm pretty sure if he was going to sell or get rid of Sturridge, he would have said so. So I'm going to trust him on that one. And I'm going to say bullshit to that rumour. Anyway, Sturridge is out injured. So Origi's got a good chance at starting if Firmino's not fully fit. Maybe I would go with that as well, because against Bournemouth, you're going to need a big, powerful centre-forward, in my my opinion. Firmino is very good, but if he's not 100% fit, I would probably go with Origi, purely based on the fact that, you know, he started, he's done well in the previous two games. He's got, he can score a blinding goal from pretty much anywhere. The goal he, he scored against Sunderland was unreal. Like, it's exactly mirror image about a goal that he scored last season, and it was absolutely unbelievable goal. Didn't see it coming whatsoever. One of those ones that takes you back. Whoa, Jesus Christ, where the friggin' hell did that come from? Um, absolutely loved it. I'd love to see Origi start if Firmino isn't fit. If Firmino's 100% fit, I'd probably go with Firmino just because he's got a very good track record in this side and then Origi can come on later on. Or depending, again, it depends if he wants to shift the shape of the side, which then leads me on to... Who's going to there? Who's going to replace Coutinho in the side? Wijnaldum started on the uh, left side of that front three the other day. The other day against Leeds, so I mean that could be an option that we've got right there as well. I'm not saying he's not a like for like replacement. Obviously, Coutinho is one hell of an amazing talent. But if you're going to keep the same shape of the team, which most likely makes sense because if you start changing the shape of the team. They might not, you know, if they they've been playing in this shape, the 4-3-3, for so long, they are pretty much bed in, gelled in. They know how this form formation works and how the system works. If you change that system, are they going to know it as well? Are they going to perform as well? There is a risk. So I'd probably, in my opinion, I would stay with the 4-3-3. Wijnaldum out on the left. Yes, he's not a like-for-like -like replacement, but there's nobody that we would ever have as a like-for-like -like replacement for f someone like Philippe Coutinho. It's just not there. So, Wijnaldum out there, and he, he, he will do a pretty good job. He's got legs, he's got the pace, he's got good technique, he has got good drive, and he, has, he is quite a good attacking force. He's just obviously not Coutinho. So, 
We've got to give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. He's not Coutinho. Let's see what he can do. Maybe Origi or Firmino up top. I don't mind which one, to be honest with you, because they're both absolutely awesome. Does he tempting to get one of the youth players involved later on in the game? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of you know talk about Woodburn after the performance he put in against Leeds. He literally came onto that pitch and things started to change. Things got a lot, lot more energised. Things were moving very quickly. As soon as he came on, um, Alexander-Arnold crossed the ball into Origi and it's in. It's absolutely brilliant. And then he gets his goal. Youngest goal scorer in Liverpool Football Club history of all time now. Beat Michael Owen's record. That, you know, there's going to be a lot of talk about him. Maybe there's something that can be done. If this game is handily taken care of, maybe 70, 80 minutes, why not give him a run out in the Premier League? Why not? I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments below. Um, in terms of the result today, Bournemouth are no joke. Bournemouth are absolutely no joke whatsoever. By the way, I think the rest of the Liverpool side will pretty much be the same, which is why I haven't really talked about it. The likes of Mane, Henderson, um, Emre Chan. All those guys, Matip, Lovren, you know, Karius, Klein, Milner, I think it's going to be pretty much the same, so I'm not really going to go over that too much. So, sorry if I'm glancing over that, but I just think it picks itself. Do you not? Do you agree? <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think it picks itself, so I'm pretty confident that's what it'll be. Anyway, looking at the opposition, let's go back to the opposition, Bournemouth. Bournemouth are no joke. Their results haven't gone their way. They are a very good football inside, and if they do get their tails up, they do, they can take advantage. They have the ability to come out and they they can beat teams. They can do they can win like they did against Hull six one, or they can get results like when they beat Stoke one nil, and they can hold out and they can get a good result. They also have the ability to lose against to lose against teams that they really shouldn't, like Sunderland. They really shouldn't have lost against Sunderland, in my opinion, just because of where both teams were at the time. Um, Bournemouth were looking way more positive than Sunderland were and it just yeah it came out kind of came out of nowhere for me but I think Liverpool have got the quality if Liverpool do slip up here it's a big question that's raised of why we've slipped up here but I don't really foresee us slipping up and the reason because of that is most of the core the core parts of our team will be staying the same so the spine of the team will most likely stay the same in the fact that um Karius will most likely be in goal because I wasn't impressed by Mignolet in goal against Leeds and as I've not really been impressed by Mignolet a great deal anyway he just looks shaky and he makes the defense look shaky as well in front of that you'd probably have Lovren and Matip which is a no-brainer to me in front of that you've then got Henderson and Chan possibly Lalana if he is to come back into the side if not might have to do some jig uh, juggling about there as well <laughs> Then up front, you're either going to have Firmino starting or you're going to have Origi. Two guys who are used to being in the first team. Firmino more often than Origi this season. But even so, it's one of those. The spine of the team will be pretty much staying the same. The defence will pretty much be staying the same, including the goalkeeper. I'm quite confident that we're going to get a good result here. The result that I'm going to go for, based on our previous form, and I am going to call it now. We have got three clean sheets in a row. Who would have thought it? We've got three clean sheets in a row. One of them was a draw. I do realise it was a nil-nil against Southampton. All right, fine. But against Sunderland and against Leeds, not necessarily the best opposition of all time. But we've got clean sheets. I'm going to predict a clean sheet. And the clean sheet I'm going to go for is another 2-0 victory for Liverpool. The reason I'm going for that is, based on recent form, yes, they're not necessarily of the highest quality opposition if, you know, if we're looking at the Premier League and where some of those teams are in the Premier League, Sunderland and obviously Leeds, who aren't in the Premier League at all. It was a cup game. Yes, it could be very different. If Bournemouth come out and they come out guns blazing and their forwards actually start linking, Jordan Ibe's first visit to Liverpool since he went uh, to Bournemouth as well, it could be very interesting, but I don't think... I think we're going to have a good game today. I've got a feeling that we're going to have a good game today, that we're going to have a solid game at the back, solid game right throughout the pitch, and I think we're going to come out with a 2-0 victory. Not necessarily quite comfortable, but I could be wrong on that one as well. We're going to have to battle for it, like we've had to battle against Sunderland. I think they're going to park the bus a little bit, but I also think that Eddie Howe's team 
will go for it a little bit. When, they, when they've got the ball, they are going to start to open up spaces. And I think that's where, if we can get the ball back, we can start taking advantage as well. So 2-0 to Liverpool is my prediction. What is your prediction? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop a like on the video. Apologies for no full Premier League preview. There is a reason for that, and I will come on to that next week, hopefully, if I remember. But if you've liked this video, drop a like on it. Subscribe if you're new around here for so much more. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.